Hey Biscuiteers, Fuchsia here. So today we're going to um, play a deck that I was playing a few days ago, actually yesterday. Um, because like a few days ago I was playing Mysteria Runecraft and um, in the GP I kind of lost quite a few games just because I <laughs> carried into Wardhaven so I kind of got sick of it the next day. So I crafted this deck which is basically a counter to Wardhaven um, due to the early board presence and also um, its ability to keep doing damage consistently and Wardhaven not having too many heals and this deck just outpaces Wardhaven so much and disrupts their early plan so much that it actually works in theory. So I tried so um after like considering it I tried it out and well here are the games. So the first match I wanted to show is Havencraft. Now, I did say you dare to um, defy the shadows. This deck is quite good against Haven, right? So I wanted to show like a perfect scenario, uh, which I kind of walked into here, um, and how we can handle Haven so well. So here's how you do it, okay? First, um, <laughs> I say that as if like I'm super knowledgeable in this bet, whatever. Um, you play the um, Jeweled Axe a Devil here. As you can see, the early game of this deck is like incredibly strong. You have Bloodsucker of the Night, which like can remove two um, two cards, they're like 1-1s, one and like gives you two pings too, and you have Jeweled Axe Devil, which is like an overstatted card for like one ping that you want anyways. It's like really strong. They play a Ding Dong here, not too much of a problem here of course, because we have Bloodsucker, so I can just trade in one of my bats here, and then, um, and then trade the 3-2. Now they're kind of in trouble, right? Because I have so much trading power on board now. And as they do play with Heartbloom Warrior with such a 3.22, which compared to our followers are quite slow. So here I play Jeweled Axe Devil, another one because it's just so strong. And then I play um, Hermit of Lust, just because just because these two. This card is like really um, really great against Heaven, not just because it's overstated, but also because it. It kind of like gives you the panic button against Haven. Like they want to remove it because um, they can't play super passively against this. Just because, uh, aside from the face damage, it also helps your wrath every turn. Um, right now, our wrath is almost at seven. <laughs> from um, normally, you want to get to um, seven uh, to wrath at turn four, but because I have this board already, like this huge board, and I didn't have a one play point um, uh, on one. I'm quite uh I'm quite satisfied with this because he even look at this. They they um play out of desperation, um this Lunar and Cloudin. And they trade into this um trade into my Bloodsucker. So <laughs> yeah, I just played the Urias because I have it. And then with the Urias I can just um the three spells here that you get from discarding your hand are quite powerful. This one reduces like you know what it does, right? It reduces your um damage to the leader to zero. So effectively every time you hit your face again, it doesn't matter. Um this one um this one has a start of return, draw a card, so it's you all you never you never get out resource just because of this card. And the crucial one against uh Warhaven is Bloody Claw because they play so many followers, and each time one of their followers gets destroyed, they lose 1 HP. And um, Warhaven doesn't have too many heals, so it's actually quite significant. So, But uh, what I do here is, beca is because I want the draw effect, just so I don't run out of resources, and I don't want... Um, and I don't want to like... Um, deal damage to myself when I'm doing a Wrath. I play the other two cards, but Bloody Claw, I definitely play it next turn. And you can see here, Hermit of Lust, um, she gains four damage, uh, she gains plus two plus two, simply because I played the Urias and had an extra ping. And then look at this board. Invoke. Now, this is an amazing board. And they're at, they're at nine, and we're at 20 HP. <laughs> now, they try their best here, but... Well, I mean, what can you do here, right? <laughs> they basically like just try to play passively instead and hope that I can't um, remove them this turn. I guess maybe next turn they have a, they have a, um, they might have a board clear. 
but we have so much damage on board and rem reminder this can also like gain two damage when going face and an extra evo so i just do this um i trade here just to remove the shield and to be honest this is kind of a bm <laughs> This kind of a BM to like play the Urias here and even the Urias um, and play the, especially playing the horrible dance, but it doesn't matter because they lose HP anyways and we get to do lethal anyways, so yeah. Superb early tempo and like um, chipping damage based on followers definitely with the ward counter. Alright, so I showed you how you win with um against Havencraft and using the, the superior only game of Bloodcraft. Now this is a game response. where the, the um the advantages are reversed. So um typically Portalcraft has a lot more removal for you, so your early game doesn't really matter um that much in terms of like board presence and it's really hard to go aggressive going second anyways, especially against Portalcraft. As you can see they already have like an early presence here. Of course, I already I also have an early presence with um, the Rogue Vampire. I picked the Rogue Vampire to play instead of the Sanguine Necklace just because um, uh, I wanted a follower on board so I can trade into any artifacts. They do play Inner Discovery, and they didn't trade to my um, to my Vampire, which is kind of odd. But you know, you take those wins, right? So because I drew Bloodsucker, which is really good against artifacts, just because all the artifacts have one HP. I just play the Hermit of Lust here and trade into the um, into the two one, which is why I don't know why they uh, why they didn't trade with the Spinarize artifact, but whatever. They just play more artifacts here and Young Threadmaster, which is okay. Now we have two artifacts as our um, target here. I play Bloodsucker. Now I have one decision here to like um, trade Hermit of Lust into Young Threadmaster, or to go face. Um, in this case, I wanted to like start doing damage. So I decided to go face. And um, the tricky part about going face here is that um, because they're artifacts, like because they're uh, artifacts oh, and portal craft in general, it's always a toss up whether like your board actually survives or not. Like, it's your board basically never survives against portal craft, right? So maybe if I wanted to like keep board like advantage, I could have um, I could have done that, but. Anyways, our turn four is quite interesting here because we do have Devilish Diva. Now, if you if you're not too familiar with the current and like last expansion, um, Wrath uh, Wrath list, you might not know why I only like run one Devilish Diva. But the thing is, on turn four, you when you Eva, you definitely want Urias instead. So Devilish Diva is really only good um, in these sorts of situations where I'm kind of lacking in like other cheap. Um, in other cheap pings, like I only have two here, I don't have to like top deck another one. Um, and especially because she provides a uh, burst presence and also heal and damage to the enemy, right? She's like the next best thing to Urias, but because you all always want to play Urias, you don't get to play her often, so she's like less important. And playing her after Wrath is also pretty meh, so um. It's definitely a preference thing. Uh, I, um, in this case though, she's very good because she gets us exactly to Wrath and also heals us. And also, of course, because we're in Wrath, we invoke um, the Knight of Purgatory. Oh, they play their Ace card and Artifact, Genesis Artifacts. And Supersonic here just for the uh, free Evo. No, I'm not sure if I agree with the Superson uh, with the Supersonic on the Genesis Artifact here. Uh, I feel like I feel like it would have been more wise to like um, just Evo the Jesus artifact normally, and then like um, and then like give the give the rush to the defense artifact so that we, they can remove this board. But for some reason they chose this way. Uh, so like okay, I'm just happy that they left my board intact, I guess. So instead, I just like top deck a Urias, and uh, because I'm already at Wrath, I draw a card from Urias. And you see in my hand right now, we have Sengon Necklace and Jeweled Axe Devil, which are not super important. Jeweled Axe Necklace is like a good uh, heal, but right now I just want to go aggressive. Um, because like Portalcraft at turn 5, they can like, at turn like 6 onwards, if they have like the combo with the factory, it can get quite dangerous. So I want to end this game quickly, um, or at least like as quick as I can, as I can manage, right? Uh, and like put them on the defensive. So I just uh, 
have like these no-brainer three cards that I want to remove. So I use Urias and just pick the three cards. Usually it's like a harder decision, like it's something like you have to sacrifice something. In this case, I just sacrifice heal just because I want to go aggressive. But yeah, this is the wrong order. I think you want to play... Um, the reason I played this wrong order is because uh, I was like new to the deck when I played this game. But um, you want to play Curse Aura first because it mitigates all the incoming damage you have from yourself, including the other Uriah spells. And then you want to play the other one, um, the Nightmare Begins, just because you um, you discarded a bunch of cards, right? So you want to like uh, refill your cards every turn um, to compensate. Bloody Claw is very useful, especially against like Wardhaven, but it's not essential, and you can play it just next uh, next turn anyways. So that should be the that should be the um, the common like the common um, order I think but anyways I did it wrong and I I attacked with this instead of playing the cursed aura first which is to be honest not smart but whatever and then here we go um Spinaria and they put me at six which is quite dangerous thankfully though I did chop deck some heal um with rogue vampire so I just trampling here and then I play Rogue Vampire just to heal 5 because although it is true we want vengeance for Xeno Diablo going into and at turn 7 against artifacts with vengeance is really risky so I decided to just do this and set up um, her Hermit of Lust because next turn if she gets to attack she will gain plus 2 plus 2 so that's a free 4 damage next turn and because of the Urias effect we have Wrath active always and we also have and we also have Avarice active always because we also always draw two cards every turn, right? Here they um here they play like a defensive play instead of like an aggressive one, which I don't know is the right um, approach or not. Maybe they just break the bit. Um, they didn't heal even, so um, it was quite, quite straightforward um, play for me. This is ideally how you would want to end with this deck. Uh, if you didn't high roll like I did in the Haven game, which is just to evo your Xeno Diablo and then like trigger like trigger it like twice or three times usually like you don't have the vengeance right and like you you can see the power of the Uriah spell here because not only does it like does it like um does it like uh, mitigate the damage to ourselves but it also deals damage to the enemy uh according to the number of followers so without that we couldn't have had lethal here um with with um with the hermit of lust so yeah all the pieces in this deck working together. Quite good. Alright, Biscuitiers, so that was um, Wrath Bloodcraft. Um, to be honest, um, I think it is definitely a Wrath counter. <laughs> it is most definitely a Wrath, um, a wrath counter, a Ward counter. <laughs> counters itself now it's a ward counter because of the um, early game shenanigans you have with like rogue vampire um dual axe devil which is like an oversized follower and then you have stuff like um arcane wolf that can just remove any of the strong wards that they have so they can't they could never carve mia um early game you if you have the early game yourself right and then like um hermit of lust pretty good um and then you can just um keep pinging them with the uriah spell that they'll always trigger because they always have to play followers as their game plan and then you just omni face them or like um xeno diablo them and because these two cards are like turn seven it's really easy to just um set up a hermit of lust like hope she survives if she doesn't usually you still have more than enough damage and then you just xeno diablo or like omni face archdemon and then you win basically um before they can play Holy Saber. Against other decks, it's a bit of a, a toss-up. It's kind of weak against other decks. To be honest, it's kind of like the other deck matchups are kind of harder. Um, so once the ward, the ward meta kind of simmers down, maybe you don't want to main this deck per se. But I think it's quite decent and it can compete. And uh, some people like tech in Dark Emperor. I think that can work sometimes. But it's so easy to mitigate now that I don't know if it's worth it. That's why I didn't run it here. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, I think this deck is still clean, still good. Um, the addition of Hermit of Lust is really good. Um, she like provides so much lethal potential and also kind of helps with like just being aggressive and um, and helping your early game. And the other cards are just still good. <laughs> um, it's just that, well, the power level sometimes cannot match like the super top tier decks. Um, 
Like for example, Sekka sometimes. But anyways, if you want to just um, bully Warthaven, um, play this deck. <laughs> anyways, um, write in the comments, um, do you still have problems against Warthaven? Or at this point, is it like, oh, it's simmering down, you don't see as much of them? And if you do, um, have you tried uh, Wrathblood? And if you have, tell me how it went. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, give me a sub. And like always, have a great day. Oh my god. <sighs> so many retakes. <laughs>